Years ago, in Loma Linda, California, where the sprawling metropolis of Los Angeles meets the unforgiving desert, the battle between venomous creatures and medical science was fiercely waged. At the center of this struggle was Dr. Sean Bush, a renowned expert in venomous bites, who tirelessly sought knowledge and experience to save lives. His quest took him on countless journeys, both intellectual and physical, spanning thousands of miles. This was the era of Venom ER. At 4 a.m., the latest victim of a snake bite was rushed from Victor Valley Hospital to the Venom Specialists at Loma Linda. Jessica Garcia, bitten in Wrightwood in the San Bernardino Hills, was in excruciating pain. New intern Jenny Cohen, only seven hours into her night shift, braced herself for a critical case. The responsibility of Jessica's treatment in the ER fell on her inexperienced shoulders. As Jenny assessed Jessica's condition, she asked if Jessica had any trouble with her vision or nausea and vomiting. Jessica, managing a faint smile despite the pain coursing through her body, indicated she did not. At that moment, the identity of the snake that bit Jessica was still a mystery. Though off-duty, Sean Bush had been paged. His role that night was to support Jenny, guiding her through the complexities of venom treatment while letting her make the crucial decisions. The venom was causing Jessica's arm to swell and attacking the nerves in her face. She had received Crofab antivenum at the first hospital, but now Jenny had to monitor the swelling's progression. As Jessica's parents arrived, Jenny briefed them on the severe pain, tissue damage, and shock their daughter was enduring. Despite his shift not starting until 9 a.m., Sean arrived five hours early, ready to lend his expertise. Jenny was surprised but relieved to see him. Sean greeted her warmly and inquired about Jessica's condition. Jenny explained that Jessica was stable but experiencing significant pain and swelling, with some numbness that had subsided after the crofap. With symptoms outlined, it was time to determine the next steps in treatment. Sean's extensive experience allowed him to deduce the type of snake involved. The location and symptoms suggested a Southern Pacific rattlesnake. This level of insight was something Jenny aspired to achieve. Every human body reacts differently to venom. Jessica's case might have presented unique challenges. When temperatures rise, rattlesnakes become nocturnal hunters. Their heat-sensing pits give them an advantage in the dark. Jessica recounted how she had been bitten while looking for a ball that had broken off, putting her hand on a cement ledge where the snake possibly was. With the background complete, Sean shifted into teaching mode. He indicated that they had a decision to make and that he would let Jenny make it since he usually did. He prompted Jenny to assess whether they had reached initial control and if they should start a maintenance dose and administer more antivenom. Jenny, evaluating the situation, believed they hadn't reached initial control because the pain was still progressing up Jessica's arm. She suggested another dose of 426 vials rather than just two. Sean agreed, and they prepared another four vials to administer. Sean reminded Jenny of the importance of monitoring swelling throughout the body, not just at the bite area, and to watch Jessica's airway. Jenny, recalling a critical detail, remembered to remove Jessica's jewelry to prevent it from cutting off blood supply as swelling increased. The more experience Jenny gained under Sean's guidance, the more valuable she became to the ER team. Every snake bite was unique, demanding a breadth of knowledge and adaptability. Sean tested Jenny's knowledge, asking what kind of snake could have been in Wrightwood. Jenny confidently responded that Southern Pacific rattlesnakes were common in mountainous areas, which Sean confirmed, noting the associated numbness. Even the technique for preparing Crofab antivenum required experience a skill Jenny was eager to master. As the team administered the next four vials, the neurotoxin in the venom posed a severe threat, potentially closing Jessica's airway. Her parents watched anxiously, feeling helpless but trusting in the medical team's expertise. An hour later, the Crofab was taking effect. Jenny completed her long night shift, having navigated a complex case with growing confidence. Each snake bite brought a new learning curve, but that night forged a stronger bond between Sean and Jenny. With Jessica safe, Jenny ended her shift exhausted, but fulfilled. 
having gained invaluable knowledge for future encounters. Dr. Sean Bush reflected on Jenny's performance. He observed that Jenny Cohen had done amazingly well, demonstrating her brightness and capability as an intern. He expressed pride in her quick learning and dedication to studying snake bite treatments. However, he noted that snake bites were highly variable and that one needed to treat many cases to be fully prepared for anything that came through those doors. That night, like many others, underscored the unpredictable and relentless nature of venomous snake bites, demanding constant vigilance and lifelong learning in the field of medical science. The story of Jessica Garcia's snake bite and the subsequent treatment at Loma Linda's Venom ER highlights several important and unique lessons. 1. The critical role of expertise and experience. The importance of having an experienced professional like Dr. Sean Bush is emphasized. His extensive knowledge allows him to quickly deduce the type of snake involved and guide the treatment process effectively. Indeed, learning under pressure is another point to note. New intern Jenny Cohen's experience underscores the intense learning curve in medical emergencies. The ability to learn and adapt quickly in high-pressure situations is crucial for medical professionals. Comprehensive monitoring is also important. The necessity of thorough monitoring of the patient's entire condition, not just the localized effects of the bite, is highlighted. Jenny learns the importance of watching for systemic symptoms such as swelling throughout the body and potential airway obstruction. Another point to note is team communication and support. The story demonstrates the value of effective communication and support within a medical team. Sean's guidance and Jenny's willingness to ask questions and seek advice are essential for successful patient outcomes. Another point to note is adaptability in treatment. The variability in snake bite reactions among different patients means that medical professionals must be adaptable and prepared for a range of symptoms and complications. This adaptability is a critical skill for treating envenomation. In addition, attention to detail is important. Small details, like removing jewelry to prevent constriction due to swelling, can have significant impacts on patient outcomes. This highlights the need for meticulous attention to detail in medical care. The role of continuous education is also an important key lesson. The story emphasizes that learning in the medical field is ongoing. Jenny's progress from initial uncertainty to greater confidence illustrates the importance of continuous education and hands-on experience. Emotional support for patients and families is crucial. The psychological and emotional aspects of treating venomous bites are also important. Providing reassurance and clear communication to both the patient and their family is a critical part of the treatment process. Preparation and readiness is important too. The fact that Sean arrives five hours early to assist underscores the necessity for medical professionals to be ready to respond to emergencies at any time. Lastly, holistic approach to treatment. Effective venom treatment involves a holistic approach, addressing not just the immediate physical symptoms but also anticipating potential complications and ensuring comprehensive care. Thank you.